So today uh, we re we're really excited to talk about a, a concept that's really going wild, at least since East Denver, it was really prevalent there. It's this idea of turning degens into regions. How do we take this like greed, the spirit of like, how do we make more money, da da da, that's happening in the degen space. All the apes are aping into all these projects. And how we turn that into something regenerative for society that actually benefits the world. It's a, it's a huge task, but I think that the energy is there from the degen. And how do we, how do we funnel that degen energy into the regen space? And I, I don't know, maybe I want to pass it to you, Kevin, first, just to, just to comment on that. Like, what do you, because you're, you're even pushing this whole concept from a wider angle to get everybody involved in it. And maybe you can make some comments on this. Yeah, totally. No, I, I totally agree. The the vibe is there. Um, <clears throat> kind of the movement and energy is there. It's regen has now become like I was at the climbing gym the other day and someone's like, yeah, I was looking at this regen network. I think maybe they were doing, you know, farming or something. I was like, I'm not sure exactly which project you're talking about, but regen has definitely hit a kind of a cultural movement, which is awesome. Um, yeah, and I don't know if you were asking me to talk about you know, kind of what I'm doing, but um, absolutely, yeah, go for it. Sna snaps to. Okay, yeah, sure. So um, creating a more DeFi slash NFT uh, like lending protocol, it's awesome. We're turning loans into public goods, so no lender ever owns a loan. It's actually a Harbinger style system, so uh, any lender can buy another lender at any time if they're willing to provide better terms. If you take so much of this, this capital and value that traditional banks and, and lenders squat on and make more money off of and actually passes it back to the borrower and back to the ecosystem in different forms of value. And as part of that, we were like, hey, this is a public good. Like, we don't own this. They don't own this. Like, why, why are we making all this money? We should give that back to uh, public goods. Um, and so uh, we realized, it was, oh, it's, it's a lot of money. Okay, we can't give it all away. But what if we just did 1%? Right? What if we did like a B Corp style thing, but for DeFi? And so uh, we do 1% of revenue um, to public goods and regen projects. And so programmatically in our smart contracts, whenever our, you know, whoever owns the contract is withdrawing capital, half, uh, uh, not half, 1% of that is sent to a, you know, the regen collected multisig, which can then be distributed through uh, you know, Giveth or Ponvala or Gitcoin grants. So now we have the system where as people take out loans um, or providing loans, right, they're kind of in this more degen space trying to make as much uh, yield as possible. Um, we're taking every, every single transaction and turning that into a regen transaction. This is really like a clear, in, in my, my thoughts, you know, it's a really clear every degen to regen uh, movement. And... Uh, I think that's that's really amazing. Like that's like, oh, we're really programming our values into the financial system. And it's not just programming our values into a token or a coin or whatever. It's like literally every transaction goes back to region, and then that's that's really bad. Yeah, and actually, that sounds like something Giveth is doing too. I, I mean, this one percent concept uh, is, yeah, I think, really coming inspired by you, Kevin, on the on the, the Regen Coalition effort. Uh, but I know Giveth is taking that route too, so I want to throw it to uh, Lauren to talk about what's going on there and how, how Giveth is turning Degens to Regens. Yeah, so we just recently launched something called Regen Farms, which is uh, an addition to the Give Farm. And basically, the reason we decided to launch Regen Farms is because the Give Farm used um, something kind of special that's like not common in regular liquidity mining, uh, which is like streaming rewards. So it's like we could enable nice high APRs, um, but it's like it's not uh, creating so much excessive sell pressure for the DAO because part of the rewards are actually streaming over a period of, in give us case, five years, but different DAOs can choose their, their um, streaming time period. So we created this kind of like unique evolution to traditional liquidity mining and it was getting a lot of uh, traction from other DAOs. So we had other DAOs coming and asking if we could uh, set up region, set up this kind of system for them. So we decided to offer our contracts and offer our UI and bring other DAOs into the Give Farm. And so they basically provide the rewards. They provide the token that they will be used as rewards for the liquidity providers. Um, and then to, and, and, but then we wanted to make it like, we don't want to just be another kind of like, um, Degen 
degen area for liquidity mining, but it's like, how can we use this sort of like people want to come in and degen to also support public goods? So we decided to create a couple of criteria for DAOs coming in. Um, first, they have to be like four good DAOs that are adding value in the ecosystem, being kind of like a regen DAO. And then also part of the the tokens that they're putting that will go to liquidity providers actually get sent to the giveth matching pool. And the Giveth Matching Pool is basically like a place where donations can go to and then will be distributed to verified projects on Giveth. If anyone here is not familiar with Giveth, Giveth is like a donation platform. Giveth is a donation platform and uh, you can donate to four good projects, a lot of public goods projects on there. Um, so we wanted to basically take like our cool, sexy farming system and then make it available to other DAOs to increase like partnerships with other regen DAOs, get them all coming into one place. And then also like bring in, bring in DGen apes who want to ape in and earn high APRs. But then because of the stream, they end up getting like aligned with the long-term vision of the DAO. They want the token price of the DAO to be successful. So it's like they become long-term supporters of that DAO. And then also to like further the regen concepts, the DAO is actually creating a donation to public goods projects. So it's it's a really cool concept, and it it, it came out kind of like a little bit after uh, East Denver, where we were talking with Kevin and and James and, and other people about like region and Legos and how can we stack these things? How can we take make it so that like a portion of whatever profits are are coming from DGen activities and and funnel that into funding public goods? So it's like just a like a one layer way that uh, we're trying to create that at Giveth, and we are creating that at Giveth. We already have a region farm live with Shapeshift, so you can like. Uh, provide liquidity for Fox Honey and like Apen on their sweet rewards, get a Fox stream and then Shapeshift is supporting verified projects. And we're starting a new partnership with Cult DAO and opening up to other um, regen projects. Nice. Uh, and I guess, you know, the, the regen space is really dominated by environmentalists and the environmentalism, environmentalist movement, uh, which is really cool. I, I, I think uh, Kevin and Lauren uh, kind of represent the other side of it. Uh, but of course, it, it would be silly to have a degen to region AMA without strong support from the environmental side of things. So I, I'm going to toss it over to uh, Ravati from Region Network to to kind of introduce how you guys are turning DGEN to region. I even, uh, Lauren even wears a shirt sometimes I see that says DGEN to region uh, from you guys. So maybe you can uh, introduce the concept and uh, introduce yourself and also how are you uh, turning DGENs into regions? Awesome, nice to meet you all. If you can't see it, but I'm wearing the very same shirt. If I turn around, uh, it'll be visible. Um, my name is Ravati, I also go by Rave uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm here wearing the hat of Region Foundation, which is the nonprofit in the Region Network ecosystem. Uh, region Network, in general, aims to align uh, economy with ecology. And one of the sort of, there are two primary kind of vehicles of doing that. One is uh, an eco credit clause, which is uh, sort of beyond carbon and is encoded on the ledger. Um, and that can be biodiversity and soil health, and we have a bunch of communities that are creating all of these. And the second thing is we have a region registry which lives on the ledger. I mean, if you if you know about traditional carbon markets, you have these uh, methodologies like Vera and so on, which are these long bureaucratic processes of saying, hey, this is a regenerative activity, and this is how much it is uh, worth in value. And what we are trying to do here is decentralizing it. So the region registry is a, a sort of a community owned thing and the registry itself is governed um, in, in some ways, has an allow list and is linked directly to the region ledger. Um, I think the other way that we're thinking of this is um, in terms of degen to region is very aligned with common stack ideology in terms of looking at the ledger itself as a commons uh, and representing planetary well-being on it. Um, so because the ledger includes um, a measure of the ecological health, but why are these eco-credit classes? Um, one of the programs that we have is, uh, is called endowment where 30% of the tokens at Genesis is reserved to bring in communities who um, who can bring in ecological perspectives and help 
co-govern the ledger and co-govern what it means to define planetary well-being. Common stack right here is one of our uh, endowed communities, yay. Um, and we, and it's, it's a diverse group. We have other communities who are coming in who are uh, focused on sort of uh, biochar, for example, or, um, or sustainable rice cultivation in India or an indigenous community. Colombia. So all of these are really diverse communities and they all together sort of co-own and co-govern the ledger representing planetary well-being, um, which sort of directly puts that decision making and power back in the hands of the land stewards and everybody else who are, who are doing regenerative activities and, and care about it or helping bring them onto the Web3 and ledger spaces like Common Stack does. Um, I think something that we are really excited about, and we've just recently started talking, um, so, so it's by no means formed, but maybe this would be the space where we can give it some shape, is thinking about what it means to have like a prototype DAO, that, uh, like a community that gets endowed and can co-govern successfully, um, looking at the ledger as a planetary commons, and how does all the wisdom and the tools that common stack have kind of play into that to help support these communities from that. So I'm, I'm excited about sort of continuing that conversation. So we'll, we'll keep the space open for that. Nice. Well, before we dive into that kind of that, that stuff, I, I want to give MS a chance to, to introduce Nemus as well, which is another, which is actually representing the NFT side of things, uh, which uh, has huge potential in this space. And uh, I'd say Nemus is leading the way, honestly, especially with the region activities in Amazon. I, I, MS, if you would like to introduce yourself and, and your project and uh, how you explain how you're turning DGENs into regens. Yeah, thanks, Griff. And uh, it's funny because I have Discord open on the side here. And Dan, who's uh, the head of the front end development team for us at Nemus, uh, sent me a message and he's like, it's such good, refreshing energy whenever he attends one of these. So I think collectively, just what everybody's doing is is amazing in terms of the regenerative finance movement, regens in general. Um, Lauren, I read the the farm to the regenerative farm article that you had put out on the first. I definitely recommend it. So my name's Mike. Uh, I handle product ownership and in, in some key areas of data analysis for Nemus. Uh, I'm actually just on the core team, so I wear a lot more hats than that. And what we are is a uh, NFT project focused on something I've really tried to coin called collective conservation. So promoting sustainable economic initiatives in the Brazilian rainforest. And what you do is as an NFT holder, you can actually partake in different sustainable economic initiative proposals on the land represented by the NFT that you hold. So each NFT represents a specific parcel of land. You can actually go to that geo coordinate and see specifically what you're helping conserve and protect. And then you actually get uh, enacted into the DAO to be able to make decisions that, that will impact the individuals that live on that land. One of the things that I think is really important about this type of system uh, is that you incorporate the individuals that are actually on the land into the ecosystem as well. So what the model does is actually takes individuals living in that land and brings them into the DAO. Uh, so I'd mentioned really quickly, Griff, right in the beginning, that Carly's out there shooting a documentary. Uh, she just left yesterday. One of the things that we're doing, we have uh, the team's actually making another trip. They're going, I think it's about six, eight hours by boat into the, the first drop area that we have today. Um, they're actually going to be meeting with one of the local communities that live deep into the forest and help them start figuring out their community vault. So actually holding NFTs and, and having participatory actions that exist within the Nemus ecosystem. Um, and the there's a lot I can go into. I've been eating and breathing this for the past however many months, so I might meander a little bit. I'll keep myself wrangled. Uh, the degen to regen component that I think is really important is a lot of people, I think... Honestly, everybody, almost every human on this planet is inherently good, right? They want to do good, they want to improve the systems, and they want to make sure that the collective things that we all use together get energy and effort put into it that keeps it alive and keeps it thriving. Um, but there's also some self-interest for, for a lot of individuals that you have to tackle first. So 
what we wanted to do with Nemus is have a really, really attractive NFT project, a project that's worked with world-class artists that we launched that can get that aping, right? Like get the people in, have them buy NFTs. And every aspect of the art helps individuals learn more about how sustainable economic initiatives and sustainable activities in a place like the rainforest can be be learned through the process of aping into it. So you make it, we're all going down a stream together, and instead of making people reach out from the stream to learn new things, we teach through the actual current of the stream ways that you can collectively conserve. Um, good. Like I said, I can go deeper, but... Nice. No, that's a it's a great it's a great start. And I know Lauren has to leave in thirteen minutes, so I definitely want to give her the floor because uh, Giveth is definitely uh, you know one of the coolest things about the crypto space is that everything is can be Legoed together. You know, it's, and uh, we have all these Degen Legos, but now we're building Regen Legos, and the uh, Giveth has one of the best Regen Legos out there by far with the Givebacks program. And I don't know, uh, Lauren, if you'd like to go into the, the Givebacks program and then uh, also just give, give you a chance to talk about anything else, uh, any of the other regen projects that Giveth is pushing. Thanks, Griff. I'm sorry I have to jump out in 12 minutes, but anyway, I won't talk too much about that because I'll just get into Givebacks and Giveth. And uh, I'm really happy to be here and, and have this conversation, honestly. It's like, it's coming up so much lately, just this this concept of like, how can we actually use Web3 and profit seeking behavior, like the desire to make to have financial gains in a way that actually funds public goods or like creates more collective abundance. And I think that like we have a really unique opportunity here. It's like people are like jumping in, aping in, they want to see the number go up. And it's like, instead of being like, that's wrong and that's bad, we can be like, oh yeah, you can, you can jump in, ape in, see the number go up. And at the same time, know that like, you're also creating a positive impact. And so many people ask me like in, in, in interviews about Giveth, it's like, what do people really care about? And it's like, do they only care about profits? And they don't only care about profits. They care about like having, like people care about making profits, but they also care about um, the impact that they're creating. So um, yeah, I think the Givebacks program is, is a great region. Like I'll just describe it a little bit briefly and like some of the ideas as to, to why I really, really like it. Um, Giveth has a program where basically projects um, can get verified. So anybody can add a project onto Giveth and start raising funds. It's very easy to do that. Uh, you can kind of do it like within within a few minutes, just put in a description and a photo, et cetera, um, and then start raising funds. But in order to become a verified project, a project needs to fill out an application and show that they're providing public good and that they have some reputation at stake, that they have credibility. And then uh, we have a project verification team that will review these applications and decide which projects become verified. So then once a project gets verified, anyone who donates to that project uh, gets givebacks. So they don't get givebacks right away. They get givebacks like after a round, like they, we have givebacks rounds. You donate within a period of two weeks. And then at the end of the two weeks, our team reviews the donations, make sure that people aren't taking advantage of the program, like recirculating donations. But then we send out give tokens to everybody who donated to verified projects. It's basically creating a reward to people who provide a value, people who support uh, for good projects. And, and it's like taking out this idea that you need to sacrifice. And like, I, you know, I like, I like altruism. I like, I like the idea of like giving of oneself without like expecting anything in return. But I think that like glorifying altruism is something that I'm like sort of done with doing that. It's like, we can actually create systems where you can give and also receive and like create more abundance in like a circular way rather than just like everything being transactional. It's like, Oh, I give and like, uh, like I give and of myself and now I'm losing rather than that. It's like we can actually have people give and, and receive. And so with givebacks, um, people get give tokens and they get a portion of give tokens that are liquid immediately that they can uh, send and trade and do whatever they want with. And then they get a portion that's streaming over time, which I, I talked about a bit when I was explaining the region farms thing. It's like they get a give per week flow rate that will continue to flow until 2026. Um, and, and I think something really cool about this is the fact that the gift token is a volatile currency. The gift token is a volatile token. The price can go up, the price can go down. So um, when uh, when we calculate the, the amount of givebacks that's going to the donors, um, it's it's like we, we use 75% of the value of their donation at the time of donation to figure out how much given total will give them over that whole period of time. But as I said, they get some part liquid immediately and some part that's streaming over time. So if the gift token price goes up, they could actually make money on their donation. It's like the gift token price triples, they could actually like 
even though they only got 75% of the original value because it took more time for them to actually receive it in their wallet, they could actually end up with a profit off of making a donation. And it's like this kind of stuff that it's like only in Web3. It's like we're like inventing these systems we're creating value out of creating out of issuance and it's like actually like really creating new systems where we can support public goods in ways that people benefit and i think like it's it's really interesting as well the way that people are using um, nfts for the same kind of thing like we're um working with an integration right now with an nft project called point art um which is a super cool project and i'll just go over really briefly because i don't want to monopolize too much time but um, they are supporting Unchained Fund, which is like a humanitarian aid project in Ukraine by uh, creating this NFT platform where artists upload art and then donors or collectors buy that art. But instead of the money going to the artist, the money goes to Unchained Fund. 100% of the funds go to Unchained Fund to support their work on the ground in Ukraine. So it's like artists become donors and collectors become donors. And it's really, really cool because then it's like donors, you know, they're actually getting something in return for their donation. It's like they're sending funds to support Ukraine, but then they have this piece of art uh, and main NFT that could go up in value. It's like we're creating, again, upside using NFTs, using Web3 and and bringing that into the space. And we're working on an integration right now with uh, Point Art, and we want to basically have it so that like this can apply to any verified project on Giveth. So it's like we, we're, we're, we're setting up the system. It's not ready yet, but we want to make it possible that like any artist can donate art to a project on Give Us, a verified project, and then any collector could buy that art and the money goes to the project. The money goes to supporting the project. And then because we have this givebacks Lego, it's like the givebacks can go in part to the artist who's creating a donation by donating art and in part to the collector who's creating a donation by purchasing that art and sending in the funds. And then it's like there's the give stream component to it. So it's like over time, they could actually even make money off of this donation after this, off, off of this exchange as well. And it's like, it's like we're creating abundance where there was no abundance before. And it's like we can transform, I think, the nonprofit sector from one where we depend on sacrifice from volunteers, from people giving their time, from people giving donations and not getting anything back to one where everybody's actually benefiting and even benefiting in terms of financial gains so that they can have nice lives and live in nice places and go hang out with their friends. <laughs> like, There's really nothing wrong with that. Yeah, thank you so much, Lauren, and thank you for um, giving us the first first uh, part of this. Uh, and if, uh, I want to make sure to open this up. This is an AMA, uh, and we do have a, a chat room. So if you have any questions, uh, you can just put it in the community hall chat uh, on Discord over here, and I'll make sure to uh, ask them. Uh, you guys have priority over me over uh, the questions that we that we have, like kind of set aside for this so uh definitely go in and if you have questions about giveth lauren's got to leave but i can definitely uh um, fill it in yeah take it kevin i just um because one of the things lauren and i talked about at eat denver is money legos concept right and so um you can imagine a system where okay, we're, we're doing loans on nifty apes right uh, or someone's someone's doing a loan um, and one percent of those transactions are going to the regen collective and that then flows to Giveth, right? And there's like a matching pool with Giveth and those funds are then distributed to different projects. And then givebacks could flow from that to the matching pool to, to the region collective to every single person who's doing a transaction on Nifty Apes. So now we see this like ecosystem where we're stacking these money Legos and it's actually like flowing, you know, flows one way and then comes back. Here it's like a way of like uh, distributing, um, you know, more wholesome uh, things through the entire ecosystem. And people are kind of like, oh, well, what's this give thing? And then they go and they learn about the give farm and regen farms. And um, I just thought that's a really cool concept. Like we're not there yet in implementation. We gotta, we gotta do a couple things before then. Um, but like that sort of thing is possible. And as we design systems, you know, in the common stack, that's something uh, Tam was also part of this conversation with Deep Denver, and I know she's in the room. Um, like, oh, as we design, design these systems and design these communities, like, can we, you know, include that, include these kinds of money Lego patterns? Uh, I just like, it just jazzes me up so much. Um, so yeah, that's all. I just wanted to kind of like plus ones and things that Laura was saying. Nice. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just want to say quickly, I, I, I totally love that. I think that 
something that is also really valuable at Web3. And just this whole mentality of like everything being open source is that it's like, we're not competitors. Like all the DAOs and all the projects that we're working on are actually collaborators. And it's like, we're, we're like, hey, I'm building this part over here and you're building this part over here. And then it's like, how can we actually strengthen bonds between those groups? And yeah, I mean, I just, I, I love the, the conversation we're having with, with Nifty Apes. It's like, and the conversation about region like us, it's like we create an ecosystem of DAO partnerships where we all support each other and because uh, we're all working towards the same end goals. Nice. And MS, you, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to echo the same sentiments that are, are going on right now. And I think it, it's Web3 is going to enable it to bridge the actual things happening on the land, too. So this is very, very new conversation. So this is kind of like inside details, I guess, for people here. But uh, with the token model that we have for Nemus that's outlined in the light paper, the idea is that when you vote and you start to bring sustainable economic initiatives onto the land, the funds and proceeds from that circularly go back into the system, and then that helps with the token. So as we're doing integrations with other communities and other partners, and we start to really play with the Lego idea, you can really go full circle in ways that, you know, traditional models right now are just broken, completely broken, like Lauren was saying. Couldn't agree more. I mean, there's so much value being created uh, in, in the, I call it abundance economics in this larger space, right? That's created for society. And yet we don't reward the people creating that value. And it seems like there's a lot of opportunity in the Web3 space to change that, to actually start creating a win-win system, a win-win-win system where society is benefiting, but also the people participating are benefiting. Uh, and, it, it, and, that's, and that's the real goal, right? And, and along those lines, actually, Tiago has a, a, a really good question here. That's like, what are the incentives that are best working uh, to bring fo folks from DGen to Regen. Have you guys seen, do you guys have any examples of your favorite incentive alignment tools? I mean, I can, I can kick off with this one. Uh, a really prime example of bringing DGen to Regen is one of the partners for Nemus is CyberKongs. And we brought over a lot of the CyberKongs community into the Nemus ecosystem and the, the model of it. Um, and the honestly, the best rails were we were akin to other NFT projects in terms of the art. And then once they peeled that layer back, like I was mentioning in the intro, and starting to see all of the economics around the model of what we're doing on the land and how it goes much further than just being another number goes up type project, uh, it really brought them in. But we had to hit them at the visceral level first of art, collection, rarity, all of the things that the individuals want out of a an NFT project. I think that's a great point. It's this, like, we got to go in with the mindset of the degen ape and make sure that we satisfy their needs so that they can regen in. Uh, Rev, Re, you were going to say something? Um, I, I thought that was a fantastic question. And uh, so many come to mind uh, because it's possible only in Web3 and not possible outside. Web3 in some way, um, one of which is along with Common Stack, this is a community that is endowed in Region Network, and they're called Open Team. They are a physical hub of farms and regeneration sort of uh, places, uh, place-based communities, mostly based in the U.S., and, uh, and they sort of steward them, bring them all together, and create open source tools for them. So we, uh, we end out that community itself. And so the way endowment works, is the community gets a bunch of lot and staked region tokens and the staking rewards are for the community to do, do what they want to do with it. And one of the things that Open Team is doing is um, using that staking reward and the process of sort of deciding what the staking reward goes for um, to to sort of create this process of governance between their hubs, so connecting those physical hubs to the open source um, different projects that they have via Web3 governance to kind of uh, use these as a funnel to fund more of these open source projects and make that kind of ongoing. And these projects are across um, 
you know, the regeneration spectrum and in agricultural systems from sort of uh, uh, understanding uh, what it takes to build an equity-based kind of design for regenerative systems to um, something like, hey, how do we create an agricultural data wallet that the actual communities own? So all of those um, have these incentives to connect to Web3 and become connected to Web3 and the Web3 systems are used for governance to funnel the funds to build on them further. Um, so so I, I, I think what they were doing was pretty cool and quite a good example of good incentive alignment. Absolutely. And your farm, uh, your staking rewards are no joke. Uh, the common stack is getting over 100k a year uh, from these staking rewards. And that's some serious, you know, people degen in, right? They degen in to stake uh, uh, regen tokens into into this uh, thing. But now if if you're giving them locked stake tokens, and you explicitly say, hey, you know, what are your values express your values through this interest that you're earning and like you're supporting the region network by uh you know staking your tokens and and uh, supporting a node a validator but you're also earning this interest that now can be used for good uh, it's an incredible system love that so in case you all did not hear the staking rewards are substantial and here's here's a plug for the endowment program in region network do get in touch. Uh, thank Thanks you. Thanks for that. I think we just, that's like a total degen to regen, like just like uh, you know, shill right there. It's like, hey, our yields are crazy, and it's regen. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, and and the cool thing that I like what, with what Rev is saying is that also the DAOs can vote and you know decide what their values are. What do they want to support with this interest? And this is something that I've heard you say a few times, Kevin. Is about programming our values into the protocols themselves and, and enabling that. I don't know if you have any other examples of this, like programming the values in uh, that you can discuss. I, I'm so down for that conversation and I'd love to hear more about everything you have in your mind, Kevin. Um, because on the lecture, we especially see a need for that. And so on various levels, we're sort of this in ethical charters and um, sort of endowment prioritization and so on. So um, my ears are wide open, keen about this. Um, yeah, I mean, the things that come up are, it's kind of like why I got into Ethereum and blockchains in general. It was like, oh, this is, we could just create a new system and, and program our values in it. It's something that Kevin Awaki and I were friends from the Boulder community. And um, back in 2017, when we were just like, you know, Gitcoin wasn't a thing yet. We were just kind of like sitting there in a circle with some random people talking about like, what is Ethereum and what can we do? It's, we can program our values into our money. Um, and that's always been like a driving force for me. And, uh, you know, I had the, the privilege and opportunity to build Gitcoin grants. Um, and I think that's a great example of like, how do we program our values into a system? Right, like quadratic funding, we're equalizing signal inside of a, a funding mechanism. Like that's it's a really amazing thing to do. Um, so that's just kind of just like a history and background of where that programming that money comes from. I think uh, I think kernel is also really amazing. Right, it's coming out of the saying like Gitcoin ecosystem, Vivek and Andy, and like the um, they're basically creating a um, almost like a mythos or a shared culture. Uh, around it's, it's much more wholesome as we build these uh, these new ecosystems and rebuild this financial system. It's like, oh, how can we be really thoughtful and uh, intentional about what we're building? Like, it doesn't have to be regen stuff. Um, I, I think it should be, but um, at least like you know, in, we're going to inherently program in our our values whether we realize it or not, right? It's, it's going to be biased. And so if we can consciously do it and program in uh, good things like regen, I think it's really, really valuable. Um, and the more AMAs like this um, or, or talks in general, this is a lot, the louder this conversation gets, I think like it has, you know, ripple effects out into the larger worlds. And, um, you know, I think it has the potential to like shift something um, the louder it gets. So, so yeah, I don't know, that's, that's what came up for me. 
Yeah, take it, MS. Just right. another uh, another point where I'm doing the, the echoing of, of everybody's sentiments, but uh, this is probably the single most important area to me of the degen to regen mindset. And I know really we were talking about how do you get degens in, into the regen space, but once they're in there, we can't affect real change by perpetuating the same issues we have in current systems, right? So... There's a lot of really good work happening with what's programmable and actually put into the ecosystems. And then also what happens at the more soft skill side of culture, right? So one of the reasons that I have such an affinity for common stack and token engineering commons and, and all these different communities is that it's not only what's happening and how the proposals are written or how the actual smart contracts execute. It's in the person-to-person communications. And, and the way that meetings are fostered, the way that conversations happen, the way that the, you know, the actual groups are structured, that's going to play a huge role in affecting real change, right? So, Griff, a good example is, like, anybody that comes in, for example, we have V2 uh, on here who is somebody I met at ETH Denver, joined Common Stack. Um, hopping into a call with you, Griff, right, it, 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 you get welcomed. It's like, hey, you know, who... Hey, Mike, what's what's going on today? You know, just so you know, this is what we're talking about. We want you here, even if you feel like you don't have any type of, of experience for this specific topic. And I think that is a huge part of the system that needs to change from the current way, where it's like closed, walled gardens, or it's like I'm sending money out there. Where is it going? So cool. Especially if it's public goods, right? If you're really providing value for everyone, then why would you enclose your little community and have group think you know you want to be open and inclusive and allow uh, outside ideas to influence it because they're not outside they're actually inside when your output is for everyone then they are stakeholders in the output uh which is uh which is a key thing and and fostering the conversation is, is so important because I don't have to belabor the whole issues with open source currently, right? But it it has this thankless component to it where it's like a group of core devs are building something and then the community has, has qualms with it. Um, when you build the system to actually incorporate conversations from every single stakeholder affected, you can do some pretty phenomenal things. Totally. Yeah, and, and this is something that a region is especially trying to push. And and you brought this up earlier, Rev, around the uh, around like how do we get DAOs to work together uh, to create to govern these shared resources? Uh, I don't know if you have any ideas on how you expect this to happen, but you're definitely creating a, creating a, 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 a what would you call this like a, a canvas for us to figure out something beautiful. And uh, I don't know how you expect to see it going. Maybe you can give a little background of, of, of uh, what is happening and also um, how you think it might turn out. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm going to echo everything I said that um, at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of the work that goes on when you think about DGEN to region and service to planet comes out of sort of passion from from within and it's built on the values that each individual has so it, it is that interpersonal relationship and that belief in what the other is doing the project is doing that kind of helps stakeholders work with each other and in region network the way this uh, plays out is um, to have any methodology credit class um, on the ledger um, of course uh, it is the land stewards who are actually doing the regenerative work who need to be involved um, there has to be a scientist or somebody from the science community who has idea of the scientific rigor behind it and uh, open source or web3 developers who can actually put that on chain and all of these folks have to sort of come together and kind of be able to be on the same page saying hey this is this is something that is worth going after um, and and um, to be honest, I mean, it's it's very much a work in progress. I feel like anywhere that you put more than three people in a place who are not entirely like each other, and let's be honest, none of us are entirely like each other, um, there's always going to be very rigorous and vigorous debates, especially when it's topics of passion. And... So a lot of these soft skills are really just community convening is really, really important. Um, and it's especially important when it's a global community across cultures and across different languages. 
the way a scientist speaks um, is totally different from uh, the way a Web3 native speaks. You talk about degen to region to a scientist, they may not fully understand, or a land steward community in India will, um, will not really resonate with it if you use the same language. So some things that we are learning is, is like patterns and anti-patterns this work. Like you need a minimalist vocabulary. You need culture that's not just common culture, but sort of plurality of cultures. Uh, that helps people sort of get together, and you need um, you need these spaces that are physical and online and hybrid um, that can bring these folks together, including like actual hubs. Um, yeah, I I could go on, but um, that is very much a work in progress in terms of patterns and anti patterns, and uh, at the very least, what will end up with is a list of these that we hope will help other communities and um, sort of use these patterns in uh, general grassroots and planetary organizing beyond the region. Yeah, and uh, one of the patterns that is coming from, well, Gregory Lando from Region Network, and uh, and I see Kevin Awaki had a really successful tweet the other day around these eight forms of capital. You know, the, the idea that DGENs are really focused on this, you know, financial capital, just going for money, but actually, you know, this idea of DGEN to region might even be mis mislabeling it, because really it's these people are people and they might be using their their financial capital greed to push one thing but actually people have other greed too and that it's every degen is actually also a region because uh, they want social capital material capital living capital intellectual capital experience i'm reading experiential capital spir uh, spiritual capital and cultural capital and uh with uh with actually this region uh, idea, we might be able to actually give people more of that, uh, more of this other capital, you know, they can get the financial capital and we bring them in from that, but then they become regions because they realize they also want more. They want more than just the financial capital. They want to feel like they're part of something bigger. And I feel like Nemus does this really well, uh, especially because, uh, you know, you're bringing in like the community so, so deep. And I don't know if you've seen this, um, you know, eight forms of capital, Mike, but uh, uh, do you have any, like, like, how do you bring in these other regenerative aspects into and make, make buying Nemus NFTs better than buying crypto punks or, or apes? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I'm glad you brought up the community because that's where the real magic and brilliance is of Nemus, right? Like I'm, I'm one voice out of thousands of, of other really powerful voices that are, are way more equipped in the space than I am. Uh, what they are passionate about, especially our core, was not focused on the gains, but focused on being able to participate in sustainable economic initiatives because that's the area that they're most interested in, right? And then what happened was you have these individuals that were true stewards of the rainforest, true stewards of environmentalism, and they leaned into that social capital where they're like, hey, friends, come in, come, let's hang out. There's this really cool thing that we're going to achieve together. And it just like these circles started to form around the different interests that brought more and more people into the ecosystem. Um, and then we really tried to account for, I guess, the different areas that you would be most motivated by into the ecosystem of Nemus, right? So the DAO component is built around game mechanics. So there's people that like that sense of achievement as one of the capitals, right? And, and you have this game component that furthers your progress and your, your actual say over the DAO. Um, you have the individuals that just want to do it from the artistic perspective, and we made sure that the art communities we were involved with, with actually come in and, and communicate with everybody in, in the, the community, and you have in, individuals that are really empowered by that. Um, but it, it's it's multifaceted. Uh, I had like a hundred different thoughts happen simultaneously, so my brain just grinded a little bit. But literally, the whole thing is centered around the education connection and furthering of, of economic initiatives to learn as deep as you possibly can through the process of whichever interest you have about the grander picture. I don't know if that made sense or if I, I digress too much. No, it made great sense. And I think, uh, I just think Nemus does it so well because they bring in living capital too, which is like 
bringing in the nature and actually like improving our ecosystem as well as like the experience experiential capital like people are on the ground doing doing things in the amazon you know and I, I really haven't seen yeah. The, the experiential component is a, a huge part for anybody on the team that has gone out there now and interacted with the communities like that. That is the single most important defining factor. When you go there, you see barren areas of land and then you actually get to also work with the communities that live in the rainforest. So, for example, Hey Joe uh, joined as well on our call here and he's the, the lead design on, on the NEMA side. And uh, the reason his his name is Hey Joe is when we went and spent time with the community saying, how do we build this system together? Um, it's primarily Portuguese, right? So they don't really speak too much English. So all the kids that were in the community we were talking to were going up to Joe and they just referred to him as Hey Joe, right? Like Hey Joe. And now that that component of Hey Joe has become this artifact of pride and excitement for his participation to this grander thing we're building besides just making a cool Web3 project. I think that's it, man. That's that's the thing. It's like, oh yeah, you could just make a cool Web three project. It's like, it's very complicated and cool, nice gamification. But can it be more? You know. And I think this is where the regen comes in. It can be more. It can be more, and it'll actually make your project better. Uh, and I, I think, Kevin, I don't know if you have anything to add on to the eight forms of social of capital, or or also this idea of like, can does it actually improve the Web three project? to be more region. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely what was coming up was I was, I was kind of imagining, okay, if we were you know, designing a new system in Common Stack, let's say, like, could we use the eight forms of capital as a lens to optimize? Like, can we try to touch each one with this mechanism or, or at least, like, be aware of it as we're weaving together this new system? Um, and then uh, kind of following that, like, um, you know, I just got, I got to go to Metacamp, um, which was, you know, it was like 40 DAO people in Costa Rica um, a couple weeks ago. And it was an amazing uh, IRL event. It was like part work, part like hanging out on the beach and surfing and just like making friends with people. Um, and the, the social capital that I got to, to cultivate there and share with other people was, was super valuable. Um, and it was... Um, yeah, we all work in crypto and we're building these systems in different ways, coordinating with different DAOs. Um, but um, there was this IRL thing now. So now we've got these friends and that we can, uh, we can coordinate in a different way, right? That's not programmatic. That's not necessarily, um, you know, degen to regen, but now we get to like, yeah, build these systems together. Um, and so different forms of capital uh, can inform what we create together like we are going to make it like i didn't the like the wagme the wagme culture like we're gonna make we're all gonna make it we're gonna get there was how i always interpreted it but it was like no we are going to make it together like we are going to make the thing right um and uh that's like a it's a different like view on on like yeah re regenerative spending the time there was regenerating me and the culture and community in a different way it's like uh the whole different little facet to, to hold up to everything. And I, the, great, but the in real life stuff is huge for sure. And I just want to remind people, we have 10 minutes left and if you have any questions, this is an AMA, uh, feel free to uh, put a question in the community hall channel and and uh, I'll make sure it gets through as, as uh, probably the last question of the call. Uh, yeah, yeah what's mess. wild about the IRL stuff too, though, is you spend all these times in, in DAOs. So I'm glad I'm glad you uh, leaned on this, Kevin, because, for example, Livia or Tam, when I got to meet them for the first time, it's like you meet them in person, right? But you feel like you've known them forever just from all the meetings that you've had and this different stuff you're building together. So it really is a, a web-enabled community building that even when I would meet people back in the day, right, when you're a gamer and you're like playing games and you have online friends and maybe you go to their city and meet them the first time, it wasn't it wasn't that type of personal connection. But when you're doing this deep rooted work together virtually and you get to go to an IRL event, it's like, oh, you're just picking up where you left off. But now there's the person that you can hug, right? Like you can actually have that connection. So. 
Yeah, and then this is something that NFTs seem to be bringing in, right? It's like, oh, if you have this NFT, you're, it's also a ticket to this in real life event. And I, I think that really brings in, especially in our in real life starved uh, last couple of years, uh, uh, it really brings a next another form of capital and seems to be a huge success, a successful strategy for NFTs. Um, but yeah, well, you know, another thing that I have in our in my docket here is how do we co-opt the global global financial system to improve the environment and fight climate change and and uh, support the other environmental issues. And I, I, I would love to hear this is actually from Kevin, but, you know, I would love to hear uh, from Regen's foundation's perspective, like what is there a way to co-opt the current financial system or bring it into something that's beneficial? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I live in India here where I was born and um, here, uh, I'm not sure if many people who are not from these parts know about it, but there are these very grassroots women affinity groups, which are called self-help groups, and they've existed for over a decade now, usually low-income, um, rural, semi-urban or urban women, uh, on some of them earn less than $100 a month. And they get together, they pull in their money, and then make these collective decisions about how they spend the money they lend to each other, and a lot of people don't have access to formal financial services otherwise, but this pool of money makes them credit worthy because it's a pattern of saving together. And it's just such a powerful sort of grassroots form of collectivism. And uh, what I feel is that these patterns of community engagement uh, in terms of financial services exist uh, in different parts of the world. And these are the parts of the world that are slowly coming online and will need to come more onto the Web3 world um, if Web3 has to really serve its sort of uh, it, the powerful impact it can have in planetary service. And tapping into these existing sort of groups and cooperatives and where they have uh, community credit and credit cooperatives, which can easily sort of have a web3 layer on top of it i feel is really powerful um we find that in countries like myanmar and ukraine for instance like a lot of subsistence farmers right now um rely on these social structures to get uh crypto funding and crypto loans because formal financial services are so hard to buy um, and that's an extreme example, but I also think there's a lot of other areas of the world where the agricultural community, land stewards, and others on the front lines of climate action um, can really benefit from connecting, you know, cooperatives, community structures with Web3 for access to um, regenerative financing for the work that they do. I want to compliment that. There's a, a really interesting dynamic that happens right now in the Brazilian rainforest where the for a lot of individuals that have land out there, the only way they can make a living is to, to clear cut, burn the land and raise some cattle, right? Because it's an immediate source of, of funds and, and uh, can provide a living for their families. If you can break the veil of getting a little bit more economies of scale and bringing other initiatives into the land. Like he, uh, it could be acai uh, harvesting, it could be Brazil nut harvesting, like these different types of things that you could bring into the middle of the rainforest and help bring other forms of revenue in. You can bring the, the big money, all of these like corporate monies and government monies that exist out there into the ecosystem and bring it to those individuals in ways that they don't have access right now. One of the, the things that was really, really interesting from one of our visits out there is the community was really interested in the idea of the NIA token and actually using that over the Real, right? Like there's this really interesting dynamic because the Real is actually obfuscated is a little bit harder for them to get and it's got so much volatility to it that they were like, you mean if we work on this system, we, we could have this thing that holds the value that we could use for our, our interactions. And it's just crazy to think, right? Just Web3 goes in there, but they got it at such a visceral level that, that it, it was fascinating. And I think that's, 
that's a big part of bridging the two. And another thing that's a really interesting model about bridging the two right now, which Rev, you, you mentioned, was the carbon credit market's interesting because it's taking global economics and bringing it into certain areas that you're sequestering carbon on. But there's, there's parts of that model that are, are broken, as we all know. But it's the first step. So if somebody, right, like what you're doing, it, it catches on. We bring those funds in, and then it becomes a true circular experience. It's something that ultimately, when I think of the vision of what all of us are doing here, and I think of that regen philosophy, um, like I, I really like the the wag me reference that you made uh, because we are going to make it right. Like we're going to make that system exist to the point where the the traditional funds have to go through this. But then it's going to actually go to the individuals that are serving to, fo you know, push forward those public goods. So, yeah, exactly. And that's that's like co-opting the financial system, right? It's like, oh, if we're creating we're we're creating value here, and value attracts value. Um, then we get to like build the system that um, you know captures, and then where does the value go afterwards? I think that's kind of like the. The idea with nifty apes and, and the regen collective right it's like oh we're gonna build you know one day like i want to see mortgages and like houses happening on nifty apes it'll probably have a different name or something like that but like oh it's, it's this more uh capital and allocation efficient economic mechanism right um and nfts can represent nearly anything and, you know, the global lending market is the world's largest financial market. You know, it's like hundreds of trillions of dollars in liquidity and like, you know, $7 trillion in revenue in 2019. So we can build a better, more efficient system that creates more value and then attracts a lot of value. And then we can program in our regen values into that. Like that, that's kind of where that question is coming from. It's like, I just think that's really freaking rad. Like that's like revolutionary to uh, to have even the po like be in a conversation where that's maybe a possibility. We'll see if we get there, um, but uh, I think that's pretty cool. If there was a group of people I was to bet on to make that happen, though, I think it's you know we're we're a signal of the grander communities that exist in Web three. Everybody on this call, like we, if if there was somebody I was to bet on to to build those structures, it would be who we have right now. So. Yeah, wa wag me for sure. Wag me, wag me. Uh, well, thank you all for coming to this great MA, and it's a great way to just end it right there with the wag me. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make it together, and we're gonna build it together. You know, and I I think that's really the the big piece here. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, Kevin, Mike, and Rev. Like, thank you so much for dishing your knowledge, and thank you all for listening. And we'll see you uh, at the next one. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody.